Welcome to the Hospital Finance Podcast, your go-to source for information and insights that can help you protect and enhance revenue at your hospital. And now, the host of the Hospital Finance Podcast, Michael Passanante. This is Mike Passanante. Glad to be back with you here on the Hospital Finance Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Cindy Kowalski, who is a manager on our compliance services team here at Bessler Consulting. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Mike. It's good to be back. So Cindy is going to walk us through use of the electronic medical record with regards to physician documentation and whether or not that is a friend or a foe of the physician. So Cindy, let me put my first question to you. Describe for us how the electronic medical record evolved. The electronic medical record is considered the next step, if you will, um, related to technology and the continued progress of health care. Um, the intent is that it would strengthen the relationship between the patients and the providers or the clinicians. The data, um, the timeliness and, and the availability uh, would enable the providers to make better decisions, if you will, and, and actually provide uh, better care. Basically, the, the record is an electronic version of the patient's medical history um, that is maintained by a provider over time. Um, it may also include um, administrative data, clinical data, um, demographics. It, it could encompass um, office notes, progress notes, surgical procedures. Um, it, it basically automates access to all of the information that one would require to care for a particular person. So we opened up the podcast by asking the question, is the electronic medical record a friend or foe of the physician? Can you tell us why? Certainly. There are many valuable assets to the electronic medical record, um, but the path to get here has not necessarily been without its challenges. Um, I think one interesting note is that the the EMR itself, the the electronic medical record, um, is is usually created by by non clinicians, um, and. Most often, there is not necessarily a lot of clinical or more specifically provider input. Um, and, and I would suggest most likely for a variety of reasons. Um, changes made to the software are, are generally challenging. Sometimes they could be expensive. Um, and when it comes to, to some of the challenges or the, the faux aspect, um, there are times it's it's difficult, if at all possible, if at times not even possible, to even um, customize your document, customize your program. There there just isn't a way to do that. In addition, um, when we think about the the the, the negative aspects, um, certainly bringing the physicians on board and and training them has been a challenge. Um, when you think about changing the behavior of physicians. Um, who, like many baby boomers, have only recently become tech savvy and now midstream um, or maybe even at the end of their careers, we're changing the, the rules and we're, we're putting in all these systems, these checks and balances with computers, with laptops. Um, it, it's a significant cultural change, and I believe that that is, is still um, continuing. Now, on the other side of that, as far as the the positive or the the friendly aspects, um, is the ability to actually access information real time. You can you can literally go into a patient's record at any point of care, at any point in their care. Um, you could look at the transition. You can improve the transmission of care. Um, also, some of the benefits, it, it, it leads to reduced errors, um, whether it's through order entry or documentation type of entry. Um, it, it has the opportunity to support um, with a variety of tools, some clinical decision-making, 
Um, and certainly, as we've talked about in many other podcasts, um, we finally can get away from the legibility discussion. Um, it certainly makes the electronic stamps, if you will, with the physician's um, information, identifying information, a lot easier. Um, there's a lot of interface with, with other um, programs, labs, radiology. All of this will then um, meld, if you will, into one, one final document. So, again, it depends on how you look at it, but there certainly are both positives and challenges with the electronic record. Let's talk about how the EMR can help physicians with regards to documentation. First, and I'll mention it again, will be legibility. Um, certainly a significant um, opportunity to, to do a more comprehensive review of the documentation as it relates to orders, as it relates to medical decision making, as it results, uh, as it relates to um, medical necessity, why the patient is actually in in the hospital. Um, it it also helps the physician um, on the post discharge um, plan. Um, it helps, if you will, do that perform that transition. If a patient is going to uh, a home health or or a SNF there's access then to that record. Or if a patient is being received from a, another skilled nursing facility, that information potentially can be transferred um, and open up a whole new opportunity to, to gather some additional data to assist in that cl- clinical decision-making. Um, I think that it also will improve the coding and the billing. Um, with a good, solid um, software program, you you can avoid uh, the the inquiries that we're sending to the physicians to clarify documentation, to to request, to answer questions. It, it it's easier to find, it's easier to to track. Um, so I think there's opportunity there, and then certainly assigning the code and actually getting getting the claim out the door is is benefited by having everything right there. Cindy, what are some of the challenges you're seeing with physicians and the EMR? Some of the challenges, I I think it it kind of goes with, is this a friend or a foe um, as far as the physicians go? Um, As the electronic record has evolved, we see the utilization of templates, um, they're, they're either self-populated fields or auto-populated. Um, we also see the use of, of drop-down menus and checkboxes, for example. Um, and again, in, and, um, in and, and by themselves, they're probably not necessarily always a challenge. However, when you self or auto-populate, you have to be sure you're, you're in and you're, the, the information that is being populated is accurate. Um, When you provide a a drop-down menu, will that menu really give you the opportunity to expand on something? Um, An example we've talked about in other podcasts is is during the um, examination of a patient um, where you have an opportunity through a drop-down menu to say this is normal or abnormal or with a checkbox. Um, It doesn't leave a lot to be... There, there is an additional information that may be required. So I think with the use of the templates, the, the drop-downs, and the checkbox, the, the, the challenge there is not providing all of the information that you may have available, limiting that. I think another challenge um, is the use of free text. I think a lot of physicians... Um, don't mind not having the ability to free text, although we find that the physician then doesn't have the opportunity to personalize, to really add the additional information, the additional data points that were utilized, um, and, and I think something is is potentially missing if you don't have that opportunity. A, a, another challenge, um, and we're we're starting starting to hear more and more about it. Um, and we're starting to see more and more about it as we do our coding audits, has to do with um, copying, pasting, um, and cloning. Um, 
so that too can be a significant challenge. And, and some additional um, challenges have to do with, um, there's a, a tool that, um, it, it's basically called Make Me the Author. Um, and we can't, it's difficult to then be able to track who actually wrote this. Um, was it the attending? Was it the resident? Was it the consultant? Was it the, uh, you know, another provider? Um, so those are, are some challenges. And again, these, these all are starting to become more and more apparent as electronic records are becoming, obviously, more and more organizations are getting them, more and more physician practices are, are, are becoming electronic. Um, and another challenge um, as it relates to coding and billing would be um, the, the practice of documenting for the sole reason to meet the higher level of service, also known as upcoding. Um, and again, it's important to remember that more documentation doesn't necessarily mean better care. So those are a few challenges. Cindy, I want to back up for just a minute and, and touch on something that you said earlier. So uh, can you describe for us what you mean by copying and, and pasting and cloning? Absolutely. Um, copy, paste, cloning... Um, Basically, they, they can actually be used as synonyms. Um, it, it's really what that means is that you're literally taking the wording from one document, from one patient's document, and you are copying and pasting it into another patient's record, um, basically in the exact same form. We know now when we're working on Word documents and we're developing Word documents, it's very easy. We're all very familiar with cutting and pasting, copying and pasting. And it's basically carried through to the electronic record where for, for time, time management reasons, um, we see a lot of taking a history and physical and moving it over or taking the past medical history and moving it over. Um, the, the challenge to that is... Um, and, and again, some of the findings when we're, when we're performing an audit, you will see that in the review of systems um, that some of the items are specifically related to a female versus a male. Um, or you mention uh, past medical history is pertinent to an elderly patient versus a child or, or an adolescent. Um, and, and those are more of the obvious um, that, that kind of stand out. But there are some that are a little more, you know, d they don't jump out at you right away. So that's, that's an example. Um, the, the challenge with that is how do you not do it? Um, you know, it's okay to use um, certain verbiage to move over, but when you're moving the entire component of what you're doing over there that's when there's when there's a problem and that is becoming more and more um, apparent as we go through some of our audits how can you address some of the challenges we talked about here today I think one of the first things is the documentation that is placed into the record should actually fit the visit if a patient comes in with a very um, with a problem focused complaint, where you're going to do a problem focused history, the talk, the documentation should fit that. We we shouldn't necessarily see a complete review of systems or com complex decision making um, when the patient comes in with something such as that. Um, you you certainly, as I mentioned, there are opportunities where you can certainly use statements or certain testing where you can actually copy and move it over, paste it. Um, but we should not be seeing copying and pasting of the entire note. Um, again, everything in moderation. Um, all notes that are entered into the record should be personalized to that specific patient. The note should not talk about an elderly female. It, it, it should be as specific as possible. You know, a 72-year-old white female, well-appearing. Um, again, all of that personal information 
um, that, that we used to see with handwritten documentation. And I think a, another aspect is that the, the documentation must support the code that's being utilized. If this is a, a new patient, a new visit, or an established, the documentation should support that. Just as I mentioned, it should support a problem-focused um, exam. In addition, auditing is another way to perform a baseline to validate corrective action, but also to support ongoing performance metrics. Um, if you're acquiring a physician practice, um, and certainly on a routine basis, whether that's quarterly, whether that's twice a year, uh, sample size, maybe 10 records are, are monitored, that can be part of information that could be used for credentialing, reappointments, um, you you want to make sure that it's an ongoing process, if you will. So how do these things become a problem or problems, I guess you could say? I think that these items all become problems when, number one, there are no parameters established. If, if, if you as a practice or an organization do not have policies and procedures, perhaps, that says you know, we do not copy and paste. This is the template that we use. Um, I think that's, that's really the start of that. In addition, I think it's important when you think about becoming a problem, when the organization first decides to implement an electronic record, um, do you have all of the key stakeholders involved? I mentioned earlier, generally, there, there's no clinicians. And certainly, we see that changing over time. But getting physician input, getting physician buy-in, um, I think is, is important, as it is across the whole organization. So I, I, I think that certainly um, could mitigate some of those, some of those issues. Um, in addition, I think the education and training, certainly implementing a major software um, conversion is significant, but I think the education and the training to support that is imperative with the follow-up. How is everyone doing with this? And this may not just be the providers. It could be, be any type of clinician, whoever's in the medical record. I think there's opportunity across the board, um, order entry, documentation, consultant notes, things like that, where there, there is opportunity to, to monitor it to be sure that, again, especially if it's a new conversion, to be sure that there isn't a learning curve, that more education may need to be required. And I, and I think in addition to that, having an understanding of where people are in this age of technology, um, we certainly know that the younger, the younger people will use every type of, of device um, and be able to navigate I don't think it's necessarily the best way to assume anybody can pick this up. If, if a physician has never had an, an, an electronic medical record in their office and, and are not necessarily using laptops, computers at home or, or at work, I don't think you can assume that it'll be easy to pick up. There's a lot of data that needs to be collected. Then it needs to be analyzed. When you think about the interfacing with these electronic records... They're going to need to pull information from radiology, from lab interfaces. Maybe they even have to pull information from an ED record or a critical care record because they're on different systems. I think that you can't overemphasize that enough. I think it, it really needs to be an integral part of the selection to make sure there's input, the development and implementation of the record, and then the auditing and monitoring to be sure that you have all the updates that are necessary, people are trained, and then you're monitoring and auditing to be sure that they're being used effectively, but more importantly, compliantly. Cindy, thanks for shedding some light on EMR and how it relates to physician documentation. Thank you, Mike. If you have a topic that you'd like us to discuss on the Hospital Finance Podcast, or if you'd like to be a guest, Drop us a line at update at Bessler.com. 
This concludes today's episode of the Hospital Finance Podcast. For show notes and additional resources to help you protect and enhance revenue at your hospital, visit Bessler.com forward slash podcasts. The Hospital Finance Podcast is a production of Bessler Consulting. 